Dr. Sabre, you want a 30-second? Uh, cost-effective federal programs is actually more on. There's not such thing as a cost-effective government program, especially a federal government program. The late Milton Friedman, Nobel Prize winning economics says, there's nothing as, tempor uh, as permanent as a temporary government program. That's the problem that Dick Zimmer has. He wants to give government more power over our, our resources here in New Jersey. And that means more control. Remember, with money comes control. So my perspective is a lot different than Dick Zimmer's perspective. He has faith in Washington, D.C. I don't, given how they spend our money. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Zimmer. Uh, we have a public asset. It is essential to the economy of, of the shore region. It's essential to the well-being and happiness of everybody who lives in the state of New Jersey. I think there is an appropriate role for government to play in that regard in preserving that marvelous public asset that we have in New, Jer New Jersey's beaches, which are second to none and which really did the state uh, much of its fine reputation. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Williams, I'll the next question. Uh, for uh, Congressman uh, Zimmer, how would you vote on legalized sports betting for the state of New Jersey should you have that chance? I think it's important for the uh, economy of this region that uh, casinos in Atlantic City be treated equally to casinos in Las Vegas, where they do have legalized sports betting. I think it's only fair that you have a single standard for the entire country, and I think that our region, our state, is being disadvantaged by the current uh, status of the law, and that's why I would support changing it. Uh, we had a press conference on Atlantic City, uh, the Atlantic City Press covered it. We have been a leader on this issue. Uh, everyone else is now jumping on the bandwagon that I led on because of the discrimination in Washington, D.C. regarding New Jersey and other states that want to have sports betting. This is the problem in Washington, ladies and gentlemen. They treat us as second-class citizens, third-class citizens. And what has Dick Zimmer done about that? Not much in his six years in office. I will go to Washington and be the firewall between bad policies and the people of New Jersey. We need an outsider. We don't need an insider anymore. The insiders have had their chance. And what has been the result? A $3.1 trillion budget, $500 billion deficit, $72 trillion of unfunded liability. These are all the incestuous people in Washington telling us how to live, lead our lives. And the result is fiscal bankruptcy, moral bankruptcy. This is just the tip of the iceberg of what goes on in Washington. They abuse us, and then they want us to what? Applaud them for our, their abuse of us. I will not allow that to happen. There's been enough abuse in the world. My parents survived because of the abuse of World War II. That's an understatement, the abuse of World War II. So I know what abuse is about from a very personal level, and I know what abuse is about for the people of New Jersey given how they've been treated by the federal government. It can't be business as usual any longer. It just can't. People are telling me around the state they are fed up with what's going on in Washington, with both political parties. That's why the voting is so down. People are just tuning out to the messages because they've heard it over and over again by the same people who get reelected time after time after time. It's time for a new senator in Washington, D.C. Someone who doesn't owe the special interests anything, doesn't owe the party bosses anything, who will be an independent voice for the people of New Jersey. Thank you. Mr. Zimmer, would you like to rebut? Um, no. Okay. Dr. Sabre, would you like to rebut anything more? That... I'm Murray Sabre, and I approve this message. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Mr. Frunkin, would you like to ask the next question? Thank you. Sorry, Dr. Sabre. Are you comfortable with the Bush administration's record on human rights and civil liberties? Where do you stand on the Patriot Act? Um, there is no more pro-civil liberties individual in the state of New Jersey, given my family's history of surviving the Holocaust. I am adamant about government being limited to a few things outlined in our Constitution. This is a very personal issue for me. Usually I tell people personal issues should not be public policy, but in this case it should be. I am the strongest advocate in this state for the Bill of Rights because I took the oath 
to, to upheld the Constitution in 1959 when I was age 12 and became a U.S. citizen. I have kept my oath to defend the Constitution of the United States. I can't say the same thing for the members of Congress and the presidents who serve this nation. I will be the strongest advocate of our First Amendment rights, our Second Amendment rights, our Fourth Amendment rights, our Fifth Amendment rights. I do not support the Patriot Act. It's a gross violation of the Fourth Amendment. Judge Napolitano from Fox News has written three books on this issue. He has ascribed them to me, saying to Murray Sabre, the gold standard, who's the gold standard of freedom in America, that's what Judge Napolitano inscribed in a book to me. He knows that I will be the greatest advocate for the liberties of the American people. No one has a better track record in this area than I have. I will stand up to any president, Republican or Democrat, who wants to tamper with the Bill of Rights. Because if you tamper with the Bill of Rights, like the First Amendment with McCain-Feingold on free speech issues, on the Brady Bill with the Second Amendment, which the Exhibitor voted for, I will not allow this government to do anything to violate the public's fundamental rights guaranteed under the Constitution. That is my solemn pledge to the people of New Jersey. Would you like to? I support the Patriot Act as an appropriate response to a, a very serious existential problem that is facing the United States. We have enemies that mean to destroy us. Uh, most of them are overseas. When they communicate with each other or with agents in the United States, uh, we should know what they are up to so that we can find them uh, seek them out and destroy them. We are at war, and this is a war where there are different kinds of communications involved. Uh, and so, uh, and with modern 21st century communications, we need modern 21st century responses. We have to protect the rights of American citizens in this process, and every piece of legislation that we adopt to, re to respond to, to our threats to our national security and our homeland security should should take those important constitutional values into effect and into consideration. I believe the Patriot Act has struck the necessary balance. I would watch very carefully for and when when the Senate considered any similar piece of legislation uh, to make sure that the constitutional rights, including the right of privacy of American citizens, are protected while making sure that we protect the safety and security of this country from those who wish to destroy us. Thank you. Dr. Sabre, uh, Benjamin Franklin warned us a long time ago, if you give up liberty for security, you'll wind up with neither. The Patriot Act was passed in the dead of night. Almost 400 pages. Nobody read it. And the Congress voted for it. That's not how you make laws in the Congress of the United States. I will not vote on a bill unless I've read it. Not my staffers, but me personally. It is shameful that the Congress of the United States voted on one of the most important pieces of legislation in the history of our nation, and nobody read the bill. Would you go into a contract negotiation without reading the contract for buying a house? And that's just three pages. Here's over 400 pages, and nobody read it. That is shameful. It's, I think, a blot on the history of this Congress, and it's something that I will address as a member of the United States Senate. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Zimmer, you look very seconds. Every senator has the obligation to protect the, the civil liberties of American citizens, and every senator has an obligation to protect the security and safety of American citizens. Generally, you can accomplish those two at the same time. I believe the, safe, the Patriot Act has. I take both responsibilities very seriously, and I will take, uh, take them seriously as your United States Senator.